In the free city of Pentos, across the narrow sea, Visores and Daenerys enjoy the hospitality of Magister Illyrio Mopatis. Visores has arranged to wed Daenerys, whom he also calls, Danny, to call Drogo, the warlord of a Dothraki colossar of 40,000 warriors. In return, Drogo will give Visores the manpower he needs to reclaim the Iron Throne. Visores fondles a naked Daenerys before her bath, on the pretext of, seeing how much she has grown. Daenerys does not want to marry the call, but Visores insists that she will. A short time later, Drogo arrives at Illyrio's estate. After taking a glance at Daenerys, Drogo rides away without dismounting from his horse. Visores is concerned, but Illyrio assures him that, if he did not approve of Daenerys, they would have known. After their departure, Illyrio and Visores discuss the quest to sail back to Westeros, and Visores inquires when the wedding will take place. Daenerys is not pleased with the arrangement and blurts out that she does not want to marry Drogo. Visores insists that Daenerys will marry him, because in return, Drogo will give Visores the army he needs to retake their father's throne from Robert Baratheon. Visores adds that he would let his sister be raped by all 40,000 of Drogo's men and their horses if it meant getting his throne back. Daenerys marries Drogo and a great celebration is held on the shore outside Pentos. Several Dothraki die in impromptu duels, which Illyrio says is a good sign. A Dothraki wedding without at least three deaths is considered a dull affair. The bride and groom receive many gifts, but for Danny two are particularly interesting. The first is a box containing three beautiful stones. According to Illyrio, these are petrified dragon eggs from the shadow lands beyond Ashai. The second is a selection of books containing stories and songs from the Seven Kingdoms, given by Esser Jorah Mormont, an exiled knight of House Mormont. Jorah swears fealty to Visories as king and offers him his support and advice. For his gift, Drogo gives Daenerys a beautiful silver mare. Visories instructs his sister to make Drogo happy before Drogo takes her away to consummate the union. Visories decides to travel with Drogo's colossar until the bargain is fulfilled. Jorah suggests that Visories remain at Illyrio's manse but Visories ignores the advice to ensure that Drogo does not go back on his word. He tells Visories that he offended his liege lord by selling poachers into slavery. When he received word that may be executed for the crime, he fled to Essos. Visories laughs at the notion, saying such trivialities would not be punished under his reign. While traversing the western edge of the Dothraki Sea, near Kohor, Daenerys orders the Colossar to halt. Visories is furious at Daenerys giving him orders and threatens her with his sword. Ricaro, her bodyguard, disarms Visories and offers to kill him, but Daenerys spares his life, which is done through Eri's translation. He is forced to walk rather than ride, a tremendous sign of weakness among the Dothraki. When even Esser Jorah will not take his side, Daenerys realizes that Visories will never succeed in retaking Westeros. He could not lead an army, even if her husband gave him one, but still prays for her and Visories to go home. Daenerys becomes pregnant with Drago's child. After his horse is taken away, the Dothraki derisively refer to him as Kal Ray Emhar, Sorefoot King. The Dothraki feel that a man is only truly a man if he rides on his own horse. Only slaves walk for miles alongside a horde. Visories being robbed of his mount is seen as utter degradation by the Dothraki. The Kalasar reaches the Dothraki city of Vase Dothrak. Visories dismisses it as a city of sticks and mud huts and takes pleasure with Daenerys's handmaiden, Doria. Doria makes him unhappy when she asks him about the dragons and their extinction. He then asks Doria why she thinks he bought her, to which she replies, to teach your sister. Visories then corrects her, saying that he did not buy her simply to make Khal Drogo happy. Later, Daenerys sends Doria to Visories with an invitation to dinner. Enraged at what he perceives as another order, Visories drags Doria by her hair to Daenerys. He strikes Daenerys and rants about his superiority. Daenerys hits him in the face with a heavy metal belt, visibly shocking him, and warns him that the next time he raises his hands to her will be the last time he has hands. Illyrio visits King's Landing to meet with the King's Master of Whisperers, Varys. Illyrio confirms that Drogo does eventually mean to honor the bargain to invade the Seven Kingdoms, but will not move until his son is born. 
Visories grows increasingly agitated by Drago's inaction and fears the call will renege on his promise. During the Dosh Kaleen's celebration of Daenerys's pregnancy, who is proven to be a boy by eating a stallion heart, who she names Rago, Visories observes how the Dothraki people have come to love Daenerys, making him feel jealous and inadequate. He tries to steal Daenerys's dragon eggs so he can buy his own army, but Esser Jorah stops him. He accuses Jorah of having physical desires for Daenerys, but says he doesn't care. Subsequently, Visories leaves, without the eggs. A drunk Visories later stumbles into Khal Drago's tent during a feast, and demands to be seated in the front near Drogo, in a place of honor. With Esser Jorah translating, Drogo says that there is a place for him, in the back, with the children and old women. Visories angrily insists that he is a king, and will be treated as such. Khal Drogo addresses Visories for the first time in the common tongue of Westeros, you are no king. Furious, Visories unsheathes his sword, too drunk and arrogant to heed Jorah's warning that brandishing a sword in the Dothraki holy city is punishable by death. Defiant and undaunted, Visories goes on to demand that he wants to leave immediately with the army he was promised, or else he will leave with his sister, who according to the custom of House Targaryen, should have been his wife, and whom he always thought of as his sexual property. He threatens to cut out Daenerys's unborn son and leave it for Drogo unless they leave at once and Drogo gives him what was promised, the crown of the Seven Kingdoms. The call coldly acknowledges Viserys's wishes, via Eri's translation, and promises him a golden crown that men will tremble to behold. Viserys, believing himself victorious, lowers his guard and is suddenly restrained by Kotho and another bloodrider. Drogo then melts several gold medallions from his belt in a nearby pot. Visories yells, I am the dragon, and pleads for his life from Daenerys, but when Drogo looks to her, she silently nods. Jorah tries to make Daenerys look away, but she insists on watching her brother's death. Drogo later addresses him in the common tongue, a crown for a king, and pours the molten gold onto Viserys's head as the promised, terrible golden crown, killing him for his impudence. Visories dies in agony, and when his dead body slumps to the ground the solidified gold makes a resounding metallic thud. Daenerys coldly remarks that, he was no dragon, as, fire cannot kill a dragon. With Visories dead, Daenerys is now held by her supporters as the rightful, and last, Targaryen heir to the Iron Throne, although later events will reveal someone who may actually have a stronger claim. Visories is mentioned by Daenerys saying that she knew he was a fool but he is, or rather was, the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. But Jorah Mormont dismisses this saying that if Daenerys cannot inherit the throne, she can conquer it instead like her ancestors.